In this video, we'll be going over merge intervals. So given array intervals where intervals i is a range from start to end, merge all overlapping intervals and return an array of non-overlapping intervals that cover all of the input intervals in the input. So in for example, we have 1, 3, 2, 6, 8, 10, and 15, 18. Our first two intervals can be merged to create 1 to 6. Our second, our third interval cannot be merged into a previous interval because we're missing the number 7. So we cannot merge this one into the previous one. And our last interval cannot be merged to the previous one because we're missing the numbers from 11 to 14. Let's go, let's go over the dot process. We will first go over the dot process of com um, combining two intervals. So how can we combine two intervals which are denoted as A, B, and C, D, where A is less than or equal to C. If C is less than or equal to B, then we can merge the inter then we can merge the two intervals. So the newly created uh, the newly merged interval will be A and the maximum value between the B the ending intervals. Now let's first go over the brute force approach. The brute force approach will be to perform a nested for loop to check all, all possible pairs of intervals. This approach will cost us of n squared time complexity because of the for loop. In order to find an optimized approach, we will need to sort the input array in ascending order in terms of start time. This will allow us to compare adjacent intervals instead. And allow us to reduce the time complexity to O of n log n for sorting. Now let's go over the pseudocode. So we're going to sort the input array ascending order in terms, in terms of start. Then we're going to create a list merged to, to keep track of all the merged intervals. Then we're going to iterate through the elements of the, of the sorted intervals. So of intervals denoted as the current, so CUR. If merge is empty, this means we have yet to merge. There's no previous interval, so we can just add currents to merge. And then we just continue the next iteration. If merge is not empty, we want to retrieve the previous merge interval. So retrieve the previous interval prev from merged, which is the last elements inside the merge list. Now we're going to check if we can merge off current interval with our previous interval. So if current start is less than or equal to the previous n, then we can merge them. This is similar to the case where we see here. If c is less than or equal to b, then we can say we can add the previous starting time and the maximal ending times between the two intervals. If we cannot merge them, then we, we are just going to add them back to the merge intervals. So add previous to merge and add the current to merge. Then we can return a array representation of merged because the output needs to be in array. Now let's go over the time and space complexity. So the time complexity is go to O of n log n plus O of n, uh, n times 2. So it's equal to O of n log n, where n is the length of the input array. So n log n for sorting, and then n times 2, they will be iterated through twice. One to merge them, and one to create an array representation of merged. Now our space complexity is equal to O of 2 times n. So it's equal to O of n. So we have the merged list and array. This is because worst case scenario, worst uh, merged will be the same size as the input, input array 
when there are no intervals to merge. Let's go over the code. So we're first going to sort the input array in ascending order in terms of start. Then we're going to create a list to hold our merge intervals. We're going to iterate through the sorted intervals. If merge is empty, this means we do not need to merge the currents to any of the previous elements or the previous interval. So we're going to just add the current interval for now and continue to the next iteration. Now we want to retrieve the previous interval. If merge is not empty, we want to remove it. So which is the last interval from merged. Now we want to check if we can merge the current interval with the previous interval. So if the current start is less than or equal to the previous n, then we can merge them. The previous starting time and the maximum ending times between the current two intervals, current n and previous n. Else we do not mer merge them, so we just add them back to the list. Then we can return a list representation of merge or array representation of merge. So convert to array merge. We can iterate through the indices to populate them. And result i is equal to a merge stack in i. Then we can return the array representation. Let me know if you have any questions in the comment section below. Like and subscribe for more videos that will help you pass a technical interview. I upload videos every day, and if there are any topics you want me to cover, let me know in the comment section below.